Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In the previous part, we talked about few adaptations which are seen in organisms which help them adapt or survive in various abiotic conditions. We will continue with the same and now we will talk about one more adaptation. The animals which are living in the colder regions, they have smaller extremities. Animals living in colder regions have smaller extremities. Now what exactly we mean by these extremities? Extremities means the structures which are sort of protruding from the body. So we include pinna, snout and even the arms. So the animals which are living in colder region they would have smaller pinna as compared to the animals living in the warmer region. So if we compare foxes which are found in colder regions and the foxes which are found in the desert region we will find that the foxes which are in the warmer condition in the desert region their pinnas are much bigger their snout is much bigger and their legs are also bigger. The reason is that maximum heat radiation takes place from the extremities. That means maximum heat loss would take place from these structures. So if the pinna is bigger, more heat will, from the body will be lost. So animal living in warmer region would want that all that extra heat should get radiated. Whereas the animal living in colder region would want all that heat to be conserved within the body. Minimum should be lost. So they have smaller extremities and this adaptation is known as Allen's rule. A similar rule was given by another scientist. It is known as Bergman's rule. Both tell us the same thing that animals living in warmer regions would have bigger extremities and living in colder region would have smaller extremities. Another uh, adaptation again it is uh, named after the scientist who told us this and it is called Glogger's rule. According to this the adaptation is the animals living around equator where the solar intensity is comparatively higher or more they have darker skin or fur color. Now this is an adaptation the animals which live are in and around this equator area they should have darker skin color. Here the solar intensity is more and we know that melanin pigment protects us from the harmful radiations. So if solar intensity is more the chances are that we would be harmed by those radiations. So we have more and more melanin synthesized. Now there are two aspects of it. One is the animals which live in these areas they would have darker uh, skin or fur color. And the same but a short term adaptation takes place when we get exposed to sunlight and that is what is known as tanning. So if we get exposed to sunlight and suppose a part of the body is exposed and the part is covered, the exposed part gets little darker because this is the place where the solar uh, light or the sunlight is falling. So to protect us our body synthesizes more and more of melanin but here we are talking about a long term adaptation. If you compare the bears which are found in the polar area and the ones which are found around this. So the grizzly bear which we say they have brown or blackish fur whereas the animals polar bears they have white fur and this is again the sun intensity dependent adaptation 
and this is known as Glogger's rule. So these are some more adaptations. Now let us talk of the adaptation which is seen in an organism which is living in extremely cold condition and here we are talking about some lower organisms. So very very cold condition. We know that in lower or at lower temperature enzymatic activities slowly decrease and finally it is going to stop. So if an animal is living in extremely cold condition then how come the enzymes present in that animal's body are able to function. So these animals which live in very very cold condition they have special proteins which are called anti freeze proteins which help them survive in these extreme conditions. Now the reverse of this is extremely hot condition. If the temperature increases beyond a certain limit the enzymes would get denatured. But there are certain organisms again lower organisms like some bacteria archae bacteria which live in extremely hot condition. They are even found in this hot water vents where the temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. So if they are able to survive there that means their enzymes must be working in those hot conditions. So they have thermostable proteins which form these enzymes and what such example is from thermus aquaticus which is an archaebacterium. It is a thermophilus bacterium. It is found in those hot water vents and in this there is a protein which acts as an enzyme is known as TAC polymerase. It is the same enzyme which we use in PCR. Whenever we talk of uh, the polymerase chain reaction one step which takes place at a very high temperature and we need a DNA synthesizing enzyme there. Our DNA synthesizing enzyme cannot work at that high temperature. So we extract this TAC polymerase from this thermophilus bacterium that is thermus aquaticus and we use it in that process. So they have these special types of proteins. So these are some more mod, uh, adaptations, uh, physiological having some additional some special type of molecule. Some poikilotherms like reptiles they show some behavioral adaptation. Poikilotherm like crocodile. We have seen that they keep changing their position depending upon how much heat they want. They are poikilotherms. Poikilotherms means commonly we call them cold blooded animals. That means their body temperature changes according to the external temperature. So how their behavior changes is whenever their body temperature falls below a certain level they go out in the sun and they just stay there. We call it basking of, uh, in the sun. So basking in sun is a behavioral change. And again now they are in the sun, they absorb this heat when the body temperature slowly rises and when it rises beyond a certain limit, they again start moving to the shady areas or they may get into the water bodies. So this is the behavioral change. A similar behavioral change is seen in some uh, lizards, in some insects, when they burrow under the soil to escape from the extreme heat. So this is again the similar thing burrowing in soil to escape from the surface heat. And there are animals who have changed their activity time. 
we know about diurnal animals, nocturnal animals. So the animals, when they want to avoid this extremely hot condition, they become nocturnal or sometimes they get active during dawn and dusk. At that time, the solar intensity, the temperature is not that high. So their behavior changes, behavior in the sense activity changes, but this changed behavior or changed activity is an adaptation which is helping them survive in all these adverse conditions. So when we talk of responding to an abiotic condition, it is actually because of all these kinds of adaptations which these animals have achieved over a long period of time.